Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, July 24th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. A quick look at the Atlantic before we drill down to each individual storm. We have uh, Tropical Storm Hannah in the western Gulf of Mexico, Gonzalo east of the Lesser Antilles, and a bigger wave behind Gonzalo, that may be something we have to pay attention to in several days as it comes westward across the Atlantic and has a significant chance of developing into a storm um, that we may have to watch later. But for now, we're going to focus on the storms closer to land, and we're going to actually start over in the Pacific, where we have a big hurricane, Douglas, uh, nearing the Hawaiian Islands. Uh, one of the bigger hurricanes that we've seen approach the island chain in recent years, and this could get uh, definitely too close for comfort, if not directly impacting the islands. Uh, on Sunday. And uh, the good news is that recent track guidance for the hurricane has started to shift a little bit toward the north. The original track was very close to the Big Island over the last couple of days, but uh, recent model runs have shifted this just a little bit farther north. We'll see if that holds. This is very small differences in the steering, really just kind of watching this one uh, with bated breath to see exactly how far north it does move as the islands are oriented toward the northwest really along the track, so very small changes in the, the exact position of the hurricane could determine which of these islands, if any, could see the eye move overhead. But right now, the threat has increased for the islands of Kauai and Oahu uh, and Maui, as the Big Island is no longer in the direct forecasted track, but of course we could still have plenty of rain occurring within this large circulation that if you move this and translate it over, even if it's to the north of the islands, you have that large of a circle with potential rain falling on this volcanic terrain. Mudslides are a primary concern with any tropical system anywhere near the Hawaiian Islands, so don't assume if the eye passes to your north that it is necessarily safe. Hazards will occur in the form of water instead of wind. Wind. But wind could be uh, pretty severe in some places here too, as this could be still near hurricane intensity as it passes to the north, as water is colder and causing the storm to weaken right now, uh, but it may not be enough uh, to keep it from being near hurricane intensity, and that would be winds of about 75 miles per hour at a maximum. And the official forecast from NHC does have this remaining a hurricane until it is just off the island chain, and we do have a hurricane watch for the Big Island and Maui and the surrounding islands, and we could see watches and warnings soon for Kauai and Oahu as well. And again, the track is still through the islands. This could very well directly hit um, any of these islands in the chain, hoping that it stays a little bit farther to the north to spare the wind impacts, but again, rain could extend south of the track away from the center even if it does shift north away from the islands so really just watching this one again expected to be near hurricane intensity both wind and water threats present and this is expected to occur during the day on Sunday right now Okay, switching to the Atlantic, we're going to briefly talk about Gonzalo. Uh, this loop is a little jumpy as the floater location updates. I apologize for that, but you can see the tiny circulation. A recon plane went in there today, found Gonzalo substantially weaker. So the tiny size, the dry air it's been fighting, we talked about it. It has indeed started succumbing to that, and we have very high pressure and lower winds, about 40 miles per hour observed in the storm on the north side. And because it has weakened, it is also riding farther south south here, with the track now taking it pretty close to Tobago as it enters the Caribbean. So no longer really that much of a threat to Barbados and points farther north, but St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and Tobago uh, could see a bout of wind and rain tomorrow as the storm passes through where tropical storm warnings are present near and north of the forecast track, which again is a little bit farther south, and then on into the Caribbean. And given that the storm is in a weak state now, conditions only get a little bit more difficult for it after it passes the Lesser Antilles, and so this is universally expected to eventually dissipate now uh, at some point in the Caribbean, and this will likely uh, cease to exist um, as it passes north of South America, but some disturbed weather may occur along northern Venezuela and the southern Caribbean islands um, before that happens. But again, the circulation is quite tiny, so not really expecting a lot of impacts there. All right, uh, on to the big girl. This is Tropical Storm Hannah in the western Gulf of Mexico, and this is uh, the, the most imminent 
threat here in terms of actual wind that could occur uh, near hurricane strength uh, in the U.S. in the Texas coastline where we now expect this to strengthen to a hurricane before landfall uh, tomorrow afternoon. And we can see as the sun sets here that on visible imagery we have a more symmetric circulation than yesterday in terms of the convection. We still have a little bit of a hole on the west side, but we do have convection curling around to the east and north. And this is beginning the stages of starting to form an eye wall structure here with the inner core beginning to take shape, both on visible satellite imagery but also on radar. This is from Martin Nissenbaum's FSU site. You can see the URL at the top of my screen and uh, we can see the storm rotating here. Now I'm going to let this reset to the beginning and I'm going to show you what's been happening. The original center a few hours ago was to the west and it has since relocated a little bit more to the east during the last few hours. The storm's not really moving east, uh, but it was tilted just a little bit northwest to southeast earlier in the day where the mid-level center was a little bit to the south of the surface center. What seems to be happening is an alignment of the two where the low level center has now processed around underneath the mid-level center and has now relocated to where we see it at the end of this loop. And uh, this is really the big sign we've been waiting for to see Hannah start strengthening in earnest. We've seen gradual strengthening throughout the day today, but now that the vortex seems to be more vertically aligned, uh, a burst of quicker strengthening may occur between now and landfall tomorrow. We were going to get additional information about how strong Hannah is and what the structure of the storm is like, but the recon plane unfortunately had to divert on its way into the storm to go on a search and rescue mission in the northern gulf hoping the folks that they're looking for are okay, but this may delay our data collection and we may not get any data at all tonight from the plane from Hannah. The best we can do are the observations we have from some of these oil platforms and buoys in the vicinity of Hannah. This one in particular shows a pressure that's kind of covered up here, but this is about 996 millibars with a 20 knot wind out of the north and uh, this pressure has continued falling while this wind has remained out of the north. So we'll be watching this station very closely over the next couple of hours, but this seems to be about how strong Hannah is, maybe a couple millibars under that, 993 or so. Again, pretty gradual deepening throughout the day, but a quicker strengthening may occur, especially if we get a closed eye wall at some point uh, during the next 12 to 24 hours. At the moment on radar, the core does remain somewhat ragged in appearance, but if we start to see a more solid wall of uh, radar colors in a more complete ring sometime tomorrow morning, uh, then you'll know that this is really going to achieve hurricane intensity. And that is likely to happen at this point with NHC expecting that. Uh, hurricane force winds would be 75, 80 miles per hour. Uh, near the time of landfall at a maximum. And it could even get a little bit higher than that depending on um, how quickly this comes together. This, that'll be a watch and see thing, honestly. All we can really tell you is that strengthening is likely and the conditions currently favor um, pretty healthy strengthening trend through landfall. So if it gets delayed a couple hours and has some extra time over water, we may see even slightly higher winds than that uh, at the coast. Uh, the good news is that this little bend toward the left in the track continues to be forecast and if this can bring this in far enough south of Corpus Christi that it doesn't get uh, the eye wall or the very inner core of Hanna, then the least populated part of the Texas coastline will see the brunt of the wind and uh, potential storm surge impacts with this. Uh, but storm surge could extend even farther north than uh, the cone that's shown here as the circulation is large enough to push water on shore even outside of that. So don't focus on just the track of the eye, uh, but the strongest wind impacts will be right near this track. And we can't forget about flooding impacts inland. Not only do we have storm surge potentially at the coast with storm surge warnings to the north and near the landfall point, but we also have inland rainfall where the storm could be moving fairly slowly on its way toward the coast and then inland over south Texas and several inches of rain could fall, perhaps six to ten in spots here. And uh, this could cause flash flooding and a flash flood watch is in effect for most of south Texas. That could be the primary concern, especially for folks inland of the coast. So again, keep in mind all these hazards as we go through the day tomorrow and stay safe and be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.